Hey guys, welcome back to episode four of Project FT86 Speed Factory Time Attack. Um, today, we're gonna be going over some CFD stuff again, some CAD stuff, and a few things out here on it that we did in the shop. Um, but basically with the CFD stuff, we're gonna be showing you some images of the car at yaw and um, with different ride heights. And, and we do that to ensure that the car, while it's actually going around uh, a track, behaves correctly and it doesn't behave erratically which obviously you can probably guess would cause the car and driver to possibly hurt themselves so we want the downforce to be predictable as the car turns and as it changes in ride height um, at various speeds and over bumps and we want to make it predictable um, ultimately that allows the driver to drive the car faster as far as the cad images we're going to go over creating manufacturable models uh, because the CFD model is not actually products that can be made. We actually have to create a, a manufacturable model from the CFD model. And we'll go over that. Um, and that'll be in front of the, the screen primarily. Um, and then the few things that we've done on the car this week would be uh, we, we removed the fuel cell, which was actually quite difficult. Um, and we're starting to gear up and, and get things ready for um, cutting and welding. We also did a, a prototype uh, fender liner, which uh, seemed to get a lot of interest on Instagram. Um, so I'll get you, I'll show you that stuff real quick. All right, starting up front, here is the prototype fender liner. Now we are doing that to keep pressure and flow out of the engine bay, which is actually pretty bad for the aerodynamics and this was a, a big hole before which you can see over here big hole um, we are attempting to figure out something that possibly might make it to production but currently this is what we're, we're working with and hopefully we'll figure something out um, by the end of this project ultimately it's just to keep pressure and air out of the engine bay which is uh, something that pretty much everyone should want all right, moving to the rear, there used to be a fuel cell here and it was really quite snug on this nicely designed and uh, built, I guess, tank holder, you could call it. Um, but basically we had to drain the tank, which was not easy. Um, the fuel was pretty rough stuff to deal with, but it's out now so that we can do some cutting and we're gonna be doing some welding there. Um, this is a template. This is all stuff that we're working on and you'll, you'll see in uh, episode five, but we're, we're prepping that and getting ready to actually start cutting and welding, um, which these this will be for specifically the rear wing uprights. All right, so we also removed the rear wing from the trunk. That was some hardware in there. Uh, we removed the rear wing from the trunk. We'll be actually be cutting through the, the rear trunk which will allow the uprights to come through it for our dual element wing. Um, that is over here now. And the fuel cell, you can see. The fuel cell is right there. All right, I think that's it. All right, so here you can see our CFD model. Um, Basically, a CFD model is a dumbed-down manufacturable model. Um, you don't need bolt holes. You don't need um, two pieces of Alumilite. You don't need to have, for the uprights, say, um, the uprights actually going into the frame rail. As long as it goes into the car body, um, we get the information from CFD that we need. So you can kind of tell from here that that makes sense why we would need to actually produce a manufacturable model because you can't produce a front splitter uh, without actually having all the information uh, bolt holes rivet holes um, a mounting solution which obviously isn't even included in a cfd model um, so all of that needs to be um, scienced out and that's what i'm going to attempt to show you here with our um, front splitter and rear wing assemblies so we'll open up the front splitter. 
So as you can see, the, the front splitter overall looks very similar to the CFD model, but there are bolt holes and locations that, that otherwise were not located in the, the CFD model. Um, the end plates are only on one side to, to basically reduce our, our time involved, but they are going to be over here as well. Um, since it's a one-off, we're not extremely picky on our, our CAD side of things as long as we can actually make the front splitter. That's what really matters. Same with the mounting solution. It's actually a mirror on the other side. So we just ordered um, twice the sheet metal. The mounting solution is actually pretty cool. Um, we actually haven't tested it, but we assume that it'll work pretty well. The idea is to actually be able to remove the entire front splitter um, by removing just two bolts and then sliding the entire splitter off. Um, this part here, which is going to connect to the crash beam directly, um, actually welded to it, um, that piece is going to be steel and then the piece that connects to the front splitter is going to be aluminum. On the underside you can see how um, the diffuser sections are actually cut out. Um, we are having those made out of fiberglass currently. Um, the top piece of alumilite is cut out less than the bottom piece because of the way the diffuser sections curve. This is a strengthening plate with our machined pieces there. Uh, these, these are both um, scans that we took from the car so we actually know where the intercooler piping and all that stuff um, are. Moving to the rear wing. Um, in the CFD model, you probably only saw roughly there as far as the end plates and the, the rear wing. So in this model, we actually have to science out the entire mounting of the dual element to the, to the first single element, which is right here. Um, the entire mounting solution down here. We lightened out the pockets of the U-channel is added for lateral strength. This piece is steel, which will be actually welded to the top and bottom of the frame rails. All right, here is one other model. Um, this is our oil cooler specifically for uh, the JB Auto car. It is pretty simple, a uh, very large face though, a uh, 19 millimeter core. It's gonna be made by CNR Racing. Uh, with a PWR 19 millimeter core, um, dash 10 AN males already welded on, and then this will actually bolt to our radiator. All right, let's head over to Paul and talk about CFD. All right, so now we're looking at um, this. We're not actually in the CFD program. We're just looking at images from it. So. This is a case we did in yaw. Uh, so this is zero degrees yaw. And then this is a little bit more yaw. You can see how between the last two, the numbers are the same, but you can see how it actually changes. What's really noticeable is on the rear, look how it changes on the rear wing, and all that cool stuff. And you can see how much more drastic it is with more yaw. That's Jeremy drifting, basically. Yeah. So you can you can see how much more changes. You can see how the uprights, how it affects the top element of the wing on the rear. You can also see how it affects it. But again, these are just images, so you can't. I'm not rotating it, but you can see how that affects it. All right. So these are different ride heights. This is a rear ISO image, so you can see kind of what's going on. So this is at 50 millimeters. And this is measured on the front, and this is with a standard rake of half a degree on this car. Um, this is 60 degrees, and that's 70 degrees. So you can, it's a lot more cool on the bottom side, but we're not showing you that, so it's a lot more lame. But you can see different things that are going on. Unlike the front end plates, you can see on the tire, on the side of the car, you can see how the actual pressure is changing at different ride heights and then we also have one from the front no I lied from the side not from the front so let's go larger 
so you can see so this is at 50 millimeters this is 60 millimeters and this is at 70 millimeters we have the numbers for all of it um, obviously lower ride height is going to perform better um, 50 millimeters is probably where it's going to be dynamically on the track at most times uh, makes pretty damn good downforce at that range for how basic this is. One thing you can really notice on this is high pressure inside the fender well. That's because with this build we can't really vent that super well so we're venting it as much as possible but if we get rid of some of this we would gain a lot more downforce. Um, so there's more on the table on this car. Again this is just a quick and dirty kind of build and CFD. We're doing like big bang for the bucks type of things like Front, uh, front splitter and rear wing. All right, guys, that concludes episode four of the build. Um, we're going to move on to episode five next, which will be a lot more fabrication. We've already got it set up to cut some fenders. We're going to be cutting and drilling into the rear frame rails. We're going to be cleaning off some paint on the, the crash beams to start welding on the splitter mounts, that type of stuff. Um, I, I figured this episode, uh, I'll end off with uh, answering some questions we've seen um, via Instagram, which again, if anybody has questions, we have nothing to hide. We're actually interested in engaging with you guys, so ask us some questions. We'll do our best to answer them. Um, some stuff we can't show or answer at this moment, and that's due to um, intellectual property or various other reasons, but ultimately we plan to release as much information as we can. Um, so, uh, one guy asked us, how many hours are in each product from creation to finish? I don't know exactly which product you're asking about, but for this vehicle, we're at about 160 man hours to date, and that does not include any fabrication. So currently, 160 hours scanning, designing the CFD model, uh, CFD in the car, and then actually creating the manufacturable models. So, I hope that answers something. Um, do you do CFD for S2000s? We currently do not. If your car doesn't have a CFD developed diffuser, are there any rules of thumb? Yes, uh, don't go crazy with the angle of attack. Something between five and probably nine degrees angle of attack is, is probably a pretty safe bet. Uh, use the strakes to actually keep the, the wheel wake out of the diffuser is, is definitely a beneficial, um, and then use the strakes as needed to I mean it's hard to tell you because you actually do need to run CFD to to place the strakes optimally but um, keep angle of attack to uh, a reasonable rate uh, front end air management air in and out of the coolers air around the bumpers it's not really a question but I will attempt to answer basically air goes in obviously and then you want it to come out um, we want to duct airflow through the entire cooling stack. You don't want air spilling out um, and not going through the entire cooling stack. So we're going to duct everything through to the, to the front bumper. And, and if you do not actually seal the units to the front bumper and actually to each other, you're going to get air spilling out as it is higher pressure. And that basically is the driving force to get airflow through the entire cooling stack. To vent the air, we're hoping that the uh, Sabon, I actually don't know how to pronounce that, Sabon, Sabon, um, that these louvers or whatever you want to call them actually vent enough, but we really want to vent out the hood um, as that is optimal as far as an uh, aerodynamic standpoint, but for cooling it may not be optimal, so we may have to figure something else out there um, or just cut out more area. We'll see. Uh, hopefully that answers your question there. Um, sign in next time. Thanks.